Okay, today I'm going to take a look at um, how you identify intervals on functions. You can be given a function, a graph of a function, and you can be asked to identify uh, several different types of intervals on that function. Um, so before we actually go through an example, we're going to start with uh, some just some general information that's going to be very helpful here. Um, if you are trying to identify intervals on the graph, this is not interval notation. So the number one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to confuse your interval notation with just in general finding some intervals on the number um, on your function. All right, your interval notation has both square brackets and curvy brackets and when we're identifying our intervals we're just always going to use curvy brackets. All right, so that's why I've got intervals here on a graph always have your curvy brackets. Okay, because we're just identifying this section of the graph is such and such, maybe increasing, decreasing, or whatever. All right, another good thing to remember is that your intervals always use the x values from the graph. So are, if you are trying to look at the y-axis and use a number that's coming from the y-axis, then you're looking at the wrong values. Okay, um, in general, we have three different types of intervals. We have increasing intervals. And this would be anywhere that the graph or the function is going in an upward motion up and to the right. Yeah, very, very similar to a positive slope, except since they are functions, they're probably going to be curvy and have some hills and valleys and that sort of thing. All right, you can have decreasing intervals. All right, a decreasing section of the graph is going to go down to the right. All right, and you can kind of think of a negative slope on a linear equation. All right, same type of thing. It's decreasing. All right, and then you will have constant intervals, all right, where you might have have a section of the function that is a horizontal line, in which case it would be a constant interval. Okay, so just some uh, background information on intervals before we start looking at an example. Okay, so um, for our first example, I've already got a graph drawn out here, so hopefully that's large enough that you can see it, and I've done some color coding to see if that will um, help. All right, what we're going to do with this, we're going to basically find four things. We're going to find all of our intervals, whether they're increasing, decreasing, or constant. We're going to take a look at domain and range so that we can practice doing domain and range from a graph as well. We're going to find all intercepts, x and y intercepts, and we're going to find the zeros. All right, so um, what I've done here is I've got just a nice little, looks like, um, cubic equation here with some very distinct points on there so that we can identify things if we need to. Um, the first thing I want to do with this would be to find all my intervals. Alright, so find all intervals. So I want increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals, whatever this graph happens to have. Okay, now I have color coded this so that it kind of stands out a little bit. Alright, the pink sections here, the graph is increasing on this portion of the graph and it is increasing on this part of the portion of the graph. So I've highlighted that in yellow to indicate that it's the same, doing the exact same thing. So I have increasing intervals. I'm just going to denote by I and C there. All right, now we need to tell what intervals these are. All right, I want X values. All right, so from over here, the X value of this graph, I've got an arrow here. It's going to go on forever and ever and ever this way. It's also going forever and ever and ever to the left. So from negative infinity all the way to the x value of negative 3, it is increasing. So curvy bracket, because intervals are always curvy brackets, negative infinity to negative 3. All right, now I have another section, so I'm going to do union. All right, and curvy because I'm doing intervals here. Now, looking at this section, what x value does this start at? Well, it starts at the x value of 0 and goes to the x value of positive infinity. Okay, now not only is the graph going up, but it's going to the right forever and ever and ever, so that would be the positive infinity. So then from 0 to infinity. Alright, now this yellow section of the graph right here in the middle, alright, that has a downward motion or a decreasing interval. Okay, so decreasing interval there. All right, now I want, um, it's only going to be one little segment here, and I want the x values. So x values from this point, negative 3, all the way to the x values of this point, which is 0. So negative 3 to 0. All right, and then if I color code this down here, it might help you remember where it came from. All right, so there's your decreasing section there in yellow, and your increasing section in pink. Okay, and in this particular graph, we did not have any constant 
in the constant sections. All right, it's all either increasing or decreasing. All right, now um, let's go ahead. I think I can get domain and range on here. So let's say we're going to find domain and range. As you recall, domain is the um, x values left to right across your graph, and range is your y. You're going to look at the y values up and down for that. Okay, so your domain. All right, um, since this graph has arrows on both ends, all right, not only is this graph you know going down, but it's also going to the left, so it's going to go on forever and ever and ever to negative infinity this way. All right, and because it's going up at an angle, not only is it going up, but it's also going to the right because it's at an angle forever and ever and ever to positive infinity. So my domain of this is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, and if you are good with your family of functions, this is a polynomial curve, and all polynomial curves, you know, this would be an x to the third, all polynomial curves do have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity, or in other words, all reals. Okay, um, now let's take a look at the range. Okay, now you don't want to get um, this negative infinity and positive infinity confused because on your domain, it's left to right. Okay, now on the range, again, this graph has an arrow going down. So not only is it going down forever and ever, but it's going to the right. But because I'm doing range, I do want to know how far down it goes. So it is going down to a negative infinity. And then how high up is it going? Well, yes, it is going to the right forever, but it's also going up forever as well. So positive infinity. So again, I've got a negative infinity to a positive infinity. But really, they're coming from different axes. Okay, so again, polynomial functions, your range will be negative infinity to positive infinity as well. All right, um, for another part here, let's um, find the intercepts, and we'll find all intercepts, so both x and y intercepts. And if you recall, intercepts should be written as ordered pairs. Um, let's identify x and then let's identify y. We'll do them separately. All right, so x-intercepts would be the points at which the graph crosses the x-axis. So I come to my x-axis. Looks like it's going to cross in three distinct points. So I'm going to write them as ordered pairs. I've got a negative 5, 0. I've got a negative 2, 0. And then I've got a 1, 0. So three x-intercepts. All right, I will now list y-intercepts separately. All right, the points at which it crosses the y axis looks like I only have one, and that is at zero, negative two. All right, the last thing and distinction here between intercepts and zeros I want to do here, all right, if it says find the zeros of the function, all right, if you recall, on the graph, they're located the exact same spot your x-intercepts are. All right, so those three points are your x-intercepts. Those are also your zeros. They can also be the solutions to the um, um, real solutions to the function. All right, however, because it's asking for zeros and not intercepts, I want to list them individually x equals. All right, so like x equals negative 5, x equals negative 2, and x equals one. All right, because I'm not referring to them as intercepts, I'm referring to them as the zeros of the function. Um, if you also want to do it in set notation, you could use your little set brackets and then list them individually, negative five, negative two, and then one. All right, if you do list them individually and not in set notation, you're going to want to make sure you do x equals negative five, x equals negative two, x equals one. All right, but just um, four little things there that you can look at and identify easily um, from given a graph. Um, I do think I want to go through another example with a different graph. Let's put this up here like this. Let's look at another one because I didn't do one with any constants. We may not go through all four points, all right, but um, this one now is going to have a constant section of the graph, all right, and increasing and decreasing. So let's at least address each one of those. All right, so if I was going to do that, let's say find all intervals again. Okay, I color coded the graph so that it would be a little bit easier here for us. All right, so let's just go left to right across the graph. Okay, um, so this is a straight line here, so that means that is a constant interval. So I'm going to do that by CON. All right, now you want your 
to list it as an interval and you want to list it um, so curvy brackets and with x values so there is an arrow on the end of this graph arrow on both ends so that means the graph goes forever and ever that way so the farthest left value that this constant portion of this function would entail would be negative infinity and then how far to the right does it go? I want the x value. It stops at the point negative 2, 4, so my x value there is a negative 2. And curvy brackets because I am listing um, intervals here. So we'll do that in green to match that green section of the graph right there. All right, now let's do increasing next. All right, increasing. Now, there are specific points all right, however, the graph is increasing through this whole entire section here. So I would not recommend listing it from negative 2 to 0, and then from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 2. All right, since they are all connected and the graph is increasing in that entire area right there, then I only need the farthest left x value, which is a negative 2, and then the farthest right value, which is a positive 2, again, making sure that you're taking the values from the x-axis. Okay, so that is the pink section. All right, and then the last one would be a decreasing section because the graph is going down. All right, again, curvy brackets because it's always curvy brackets with intervals. My first x value where that starts at is a 2. And then how far to the right is it going? Well, if this graph is going down, yes, it is going down, but it is also, since at an angle, it is also continuing to go to the right to positive infinity. So I've got a positive infinity right there for that. And that section of the graph then would be decreasing. All right, let's um, go ahead and do, we won't do all four like I did on the last one, but let's do address domain and range because domain and range of these sometimes seem to be a little bit harder. Um, so let's go for part B here. Let's find domain and range. Okay, for my domain, okay. Um, since I have arrows on both ends, all right, then that's indicating I'm going forever and ever to the left and also forever and ever to the right. All right, so my domain looking left to right is going to remain at negative infinity to positive infinity. So that remains the same. Even though it's not a polynomial function, all right, I still can have that same type of domain. Now, when I look at my range, all right, I have to be very, very careful, all right. Um, this is not the lowest value of the graph, even though the way it's kind of drawn, it kind of looks like, like negative 2 would be the lowest value. Okay, however, you've got to remember that this portion of the graph has an arrow on it, and even though when I drew it, I stopped right there, which is higher than that, there's an arrow there, so the graph does continue to go on forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever down. Okay, in which case, my lowest y value is going to be a negative infinity. All right, now how high does the graph go up on that y-axis? Well, the highest point of the graph is right there, and that is across from 2 on the y-axis, so it goes up to 2. All right, it is part of the graph. There's a solid dot there. It's, you know, it's continuous right there, and so I would need a square bracket because on domain and range, you do have to decide between curvy brackets and square brackets and, and that such. All right, so uh, intervals and domain and range, definitely important to be able to find those from a graph, all right? And then knowing the difference between the intercepts and the zeros, that's also important as well. All right, um, if you like the video and the explanations are going really good for you, then go ahead and give me a like on the video. Thanks for watching.